Well, there was the the ladybugs are kept alive by they have uh, okay. their, some of their food in there. Uh, on the X-ray machine located at the front of the federal building, when I asked him what he was his reason for disrupting the screening process, he said the government bugs him, so he will bug the government. Was this, you you got to admit, pretty funny. It is very funny. Okay. So tell me, tell me about what was going on that day. Um, well, I want to. Well, it's. You're, so you're my lawyer. You're my oh, no, you're right. my defense lawyer. That's okay. Right. Um, ten years ago, I walked into a meeting of the San Diego. Do you mind if I take notes? Please. Okay. Okay. Uh, the, uh, on January tenth, two thousand six. Uh huh. Uh, at the meeting of the San Diego uh, County Board of Supervisors. Okay. I'll let you catch up. I'm good. Okay. Uh -huh. um, I thought you were going to write it all in. Um, okay, so there was a meeting of the supervisors. Uh -huh. I gave a public statement, okay. and I went a little too far, and I guess they considered it threatening. I mean, I wasn't. I was threatening to have protests at their house. They were, they were suing the state of California to overturn Prop 215. Okay. The medical marijuana law. So a bunch uh -huh. of us activists were at that meeting. We had a protest outside with bullhorns. Okay. We went inside. I kind of let the supervisors have it. Uh -huh. um, and from that point on, my life has been destroyed. Okay. I've so been put on a federal, some sort of terrorist watch list. Uh, the FBI, Homeland Security, whoever it is, has gone into my last five employers uh -huh. and forced them to fire me. And I've documented this. And not, oops, none of the firings make sense in any other con, uh, uh, context. Okay. Um, they have tortured me basically for the last 10 years mm -hmm. to the point where I know it sounds crazy, but I have a website and I'm going to make sure you write this down. Okay. It's called A Patriot Acted. Okay. Dot blogspot. Thank you, sir. You're welcome. Have a good day. Dot com. Okay. Now, I've been documenting this. Uh, my daughter, uh, my, my fiance died nine years ago okay. from breast cancer. I've been taking care of her mentally disabled daughter okay. ever since, who's now 26. Um, every boyfriend she has had, except for two, over the last 10 years, have been undercover cops. Four years ago, or five years ago now, uh, one of them announced he was a police officer when I confronted him. And that was followed by nine police officers coming around the corner in formation, even though their cars were not parked in front of her apartment. Mm -hmm. Wait, hold on. They claimed to have made a 90-second uh, response time to my daughter calling 911. Mm -hmm. But in reality, they were waiting right around the corner until he did the code word, which was, I'm a cop, get on the ground right now. Mm -hmm. Nine cops came around. The sergeant in charge filled out a... Um, a uh, Forget the, the, the there's paperwork with the DMV to suspend my license. Mm -hmm. I didn't even have a car at the time. This happened at my apartment. Okay. He filled out the paperwork in such a way, accidentally, that they DMV never notified me. They just suspended my license, and I got notified afterwards. Had to spend the next four months trying to get my license back because the officer in charge accidentally filled out paperwork wrong and... He, he wrote it up as he was disheveled and smelled of marijuana. Well, it was midnight at my apartment. He wrote it up as if I had been in a car, so they suspended my license. Mm -hmm. Everything that's happened since then, I, I mean, you don't have enough paper for what they've done to me over the last 10 years. Okay. My, but the most important thing is my daughter's son was fathered by another undercover cop. Okay. So my grandson was fathered by a federal agent as part of this investigation that for 10 years I've been unable to prove is actually happening. Even though every bus driver in this town knows it's happening because I made ostensibly a comment about how easy it would be to commit a terrorist act on a bus without any money. So now they think that's what I'm going to do. So every bus driver 
in this town knows who I am because every time I get on a bus, there's federal agents just in case this is the day that I snap. My daughter was raped on July 3rd because they were trying to get me to commit an act of terror on July 4th. Now, I know that sounds crazy, but in the week leading up to that, my daughter was hospitalized twice, and then I was woken up with a rock thrown at my head. The police refused to investigate the rock being thrown at my head. In fact, there were six cameras that showed the, the, the assailant's getaway, but they wouldn't look at any of them. And I've documented on that website, here's all the cameras the cops wouldn't look at. I was woken up with a rock to my head and ended up in the emergency room. After my daughter was put in the emergency room the two previous mornings. That was the week leading up to July 4th. Every week leading up to July 4th, they torture me and my family. I don't know how else to say it. Now, I don't want to be a terrorist. I've walked in, to, I've called a dozen senators and congressmen. Either find another room or I don't know what to tell you, son. Okay. But just, no, just keep it down. Okay, I'm, I'm sorry. I believe everything you're saying. It sounds very dramatic. Well, it's quite dramatic. So let me and I'm ask, sorry. Let me ask you this. Yes. What are your goals for this? case. I, I know you have a lot I'm, going on. I, mean, and, I know. Well, there, well, and there's a specific, here, here's the thing. Okay. Uh, <coughs> you stated you were a driver. Let me get a drink of water. No problem. Yeah. Okay. Alright, they knew I was coming to the federal building. I announced it to quite a few people on Facebook. I want to prove that they knew I was coming. Okay. Now, I taped the whole thing. It was a live, I did a live stream, and I have a 30-minute tape of the incident. Mm -hmm. The officer who issued the ticket, well, not he, one of the officers who issued the ticket, specifically kept referring to a woman who was the complainant. He said there was a woman who she was, she was very upset. Um, he referred to her like three times that, that the trauma, the reason they're giving me the ticket is because this woman was upset by me releasing the ladybugs. Mm -hmm. Now I know there were two undercover federal agents standing at the door when I arrived. And she was one of them. So I want to call her as a witness because I have him on tape saying she's a civilian. And I want to prove that she's not a civilian because I want to prove that they knew I was coming. And how would proving that she's not a civilian prove that they knew you were coming? Well, how would they know I was coming? How would the federal government, if they're not watching me, know that I was planning on bringing ladybugs to the federal building that day. So, and why do you believe that they know that? Well, I told people that's, that was what I was said. I'm going to do something. I'm going to jail. I, I was hoping to either go to jail or get shot, to be honest with you. And why, why was that what you wanted? Well, because the only way all of the people, every boss who has been forced to sign a national security letter, so if they tell me that they fired me because the FBI told them to, mm -hmm. they'll go to jail. Mm -hmm. They were a national security letter. It's a, it's a, a, a legislative subpoena that violates my constitutional rights. Okay. Now, there's been, I would, I, it would sound crazy to say hundreds over the last 10 years, but hundreds. Okay. Everyone, people that I went to high school with have been drafted into this. To One guy called me on the day of our, our 10 year, our 20 year reunion, said he had $4,000 he was donating to my, my film company. Spent the next year and a half, drove all the way to San Diego once, said, I have the check, I'll have it for you, in a, and by the end of the day, leaves. Just, just ridiculous things like that, that, that I've documented, there's no way these are people just all together randomly torturing me. My daughter's been raped by DEA agents three times, not because they're creeps, which they are, but because they were trying to turn me into a terrorist. Because for these 10 years, the only way they can justify the 10-year investigation is if I snap. So every day that I don't snap, they torture my family harder. So the thing I finally decided to do to make to to get this out in the open mm -hmm. was come into the Fed. I was hoping to shut down the federal building. I thought it, I I was stupid to release them in the lobby. If I had come in, I probably could have gotten it into the system and shut down the building. And then I would have gotten on TV, and then there would have been an investigation into what the hell's going on here. Well, you can't do that because how do I stop it? 
10 years of torture. It's not metaphorical torture. I have a 42-minute videotape of my daughter screaming in pain because the DEA agents who have been hypnotizing her make her, they can switch her into this person. She has multiple personality disorder. Mm -hmm. They switch her into a personality they created called Mamas, which is the name of our missing dead cat. Once she goes into Mamas, she thinks she's in labor. The two days she was in the hospital before I was woken up with the rock to the head, mm -hmm. she screamed, yelled, and vomited. All. Did you need to talk to Anne? Still, she's here for a moment. She has to go back upstairs. Uh oh no, we had Josh sign that. Yeah. I know. I'm sorry. I'm, but the but the point is that I'm getting to this is I want a trial for the bugs in the lobby, and I want to plead self-defense. Okay. Um, <laughs> is the is the short version of that story? Okay. So. Okay. Um. So let me tell you briefly. Yeah. <laughs> what normally happens in this kind of case? Yeah. And um, explain to you. I hear what your goals are, and so I want to explain to you what we often try to do for folks, and. Um, talk through that option with okay. you, okay? So what we do for a lot of people is try to get what we call a deferred prosecution, okay. right? Which is just if you don't get in trouble for a certain amount of time, then the ticket goes away, they dismiss wow. it. Wow, okay. Yeah. Um, now, for most people who didn't want to get in trouble, that's a good option. Yeah, I would see, I would see that. Yeah. Um, and, you know, of course, I, I have to tell you that if you went to trial and you were found guilty, you could potentially be sentenced to jail for this offense. How, what's the maximum? So I want to look up, yeah. I'm not I'm <coughs> confused about what regulation they charged you under, so. Well, they were pretty confused about what to do. They, they kept me in the. Usually the maximum penalty is six months wow. for things that are in this court. That doesn't mean that you would receive that no. penalty, but I do have to, <laughs> you know, I have to inform you I of understand. the possibilities. Um, Thirty days is the maximum. No, that's not. Yeah. And that that is the the statute they charged me with was. Uh, Disturbing the peace, or yeah, disturbing the peace, disorderly conduct. Yeah, mm -hmm. <laughs> they didn't know what to do. Um, yeah, that's you know that's a common one for this sort of yeah. incident. So I mean, as a lawyer, what what I mean, yeah, the Constitution doesn't work here. It it stopped working with the Patriot Act, and the fact they can go to employers say we want you to fire him. He said for whatever. I don't know what they're telling them, uh -huh. but I I documented that this is happening. There's no way mm -hmm. these last. I'm homeless. I have a cart of belongings I push around because begging for money mm -hmm. is the only thing I can do that they can't stop me from doing. Mm -hmm. And I know it sounds crazy, but this is the situation here. And the ladybugs in the lobby was the least violent thing I could think of doing. And, and the range of things goes all the way up. I took a bridge hostage four and a half years ago to try to stop this. Mm -hmm. caused, caused the largest traffic jam in San Diego history. Mm -hmm. And all I did was end up in, they, they held me for 14 days as a psych. Uh, psych ward. Yeah. Force medicated me, yeah. by the way. Yeah. They told the police, the, the police told the press mm -hmm. that it was a political protest. Mm -hmm. They went to court, they force medicated me. Mm -hmm. Do you know why? Mm -hmm. This is great. The, I explained to the doctor, I part of what had happened right before the the my daughter's boyfriend had revealed he was a cop, ordered me on the ground. Right before that, I worked for a dispensary, and I was the only non-DEA member there. And they moved me up, opened three dispensaries, put me in charge of all of them, where they were setting me up to take the fall. This is when San Diego was doing the crackdown. Mm -hmm. They quadrupled the amount of product they kept on premises right before we knew raids were coming. Mm -hmm. And they started carrying baby plants. Mm -hmm. which are called clones. Right. Now, I explained to, the, my, to the, the psychiatric doctor 
all of this. And that's why I quit the job, because it made no sense. These are all extra charges, and I'm in charge. I'm going to jail for 20 years for this, because now there's plants, four times the product. She testified in the hearing to have me uh, force medicated that I thought my boss and the other employees had been replaced with clones. Now, in the hearing, I'm like, no, 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 baby plant. They brought in a whole new set of charges, baby plants. Mm -hmm. And I explained that to her in the hearing. I said, does that change your, your opinion? Good. No, she says Good. nervously. Good. Because that doctor's an idiot, they force medicated me with Risperidol. Mm -hmm. I was laying on the ground kicking and screaming like a lunatic 45 minutes after taking it. The only reason my brain still works is because I was able to... to keep the, the pill under my tongue and spit it out for the two weeks. Is that the only time you've ever been prescribed Risperdal? Oh yeah, That's, there's no, no history of anything that would even suggest that. And what's the condition that you have for your medical recommendation for marijuana? Uh, anxiety and scoliosis. Okay. I have a bone malady where I have to do this all day because I was given high doses of fluoride as a baby. Um, okay. <sighs> So, here's what I'm concerned about. I don't think that even having a trial about this case is going to get you what you want in terms so, of the so records and things like that that you're interested in getting disclosed to you. Because, yeah. um, first of all, for this kind of regulation, the trial would just be in front of a magistrate judge. There wouldn't be a There's jury. No jury. There's no way to get a jury trial. You can't petition for We that. could ask, but they can say no. <laughs> Yeah, wow. because the the Constitution, when it comes to your right to a jury trial, it's if you're looking at more than a year in jail, a year or more. So it's um, the only way to get a jury trial. For yeah, um, now I mean, it sounds like you have a number of civil disputes against the government yeah. that that I have which, no way to pursue because which, lawyers won't. I, I, I call a spade of lawyers after yeah. calling all the Congress. Because I, I, I carry a letter from Diane Feinstein's office around with me uh -huh. saying, there's nothing we can do. You need to seek legal representation. But I can't right. even prove that the investigation exists. Well, if, I mean, if you're, I can't give you advice about what to do with your employers. But if, you're, <coughs> if your position is that your employers have terminated you for wrongful reasons, that's something to speak to an employment lawyer I about. should have done that, which passed the two years of, of, yeah. of uh, so, I mean, what I would advise you now. sort of as your life goals would be <laughs> to, to try to seek employment again. Get fired and then, and then do that. Yeah. And if that's really what's happening, right? I mean, if, yeah. it, if it, you know, maybe, maybe they'll give up on you, maybe they'll get tired of you. I, I don't they, understand how at this point. If they don't, not. then... Yeah, if that's what's happening, that's how that would come to light. There would be a discovery. And, and I knew that, too. I just was so... In you also have the right under the Freedom of Information Act to to ask the government if the FBI has a file on you. So that is, you know, I mean, they may say that they don't or that they or they may redact the results. Well, I, if, if, if what I'm saying is true, it's a 10-year investigation that's been daily and involved people who date my daughter for over a year at a time, yeah. there's going to be a stack of redacted documents higher than this room, which would be great. Well, then that you would at least it. know. Right? But how do so, I do but that? Those, I mean, so those are things that you can do. How do I, I thought I can't, I, I was told that I can't do a FOIA for myself, that you have to have somebody else no, do it. you can FOIA your own records. Yeah, it's actually easier to FOIA I, your I own Because I beg the, I, I tried to get the um, Associated Press to do this, to cover the story. She said she was going to look into it, but she needed to do a FOIA first. Uh -huh. I called her back a day, two days later. She goes, oh, I'm not going to do a FOIA. I'm like, just tell you, please just do it. No, you, but you can't do it. You can have somebody do it for you. But she never said I, I didn't. I should look into it. Well, well, how, how, how's this for ridiculous? The ACLU, you have a, their process is you file a complaint with them. And everybody who files a complaint gets a a discussion. They call you back or they contact you and they discuss the case and decide whether or not to. Mm -hmm. I have reached out to them four times. Mm -hmm. I have never heard back from them once. The ACLU? Never. Well, they, yeah, I mean, I, I, I'm familiar with their intake process. They get a lot of requests. And they just ignore know? Because they, well, say, they say their policy is that they, they will contact everyone to at least discuss it. They won't even call me back. And I don't, because well, I don't. Oftentimes they contact by mail. If you don't have a mail. I did have mail. I've always had a box some way to. In fact, you need to change my address that you guys have because okay. that goes to a church in Lancaster and I don't I have to call them for it. So what's your current address? Uh, let me look it up here. Uh, 
It's 4629 mm -hmm. Cass, C-A-S-S, -S, mm -hmm. Street in San Diego. Okay. And it's uh, 92109. Okay. 92109. Okay. So I think in terms of what we're dealing with here, um, let, let me see if, if I can't get this dismissed. Um, no, if, because I mean, my whole point was to have a trial and be able to at least call to, to, to call witnesses. And mm -hmm. I mean, could I, I wanted to press my case that this is happening. There's no way I can. Well. I mean, would, would the, I guess my question is, since you said it's just a magistrate, would he limit who I could call as witnesses? Yeah, there are, I mean, there are, rules not, of, there are rules of evidence. So, you know, if we try to subpoena government agents, first of all, we have to know the names of whom we're trying well, to subpoena. That's, no, no, I have three civilians that I, in San Diego, who I know for a fact worked as, as part of this. Okay. And I want to subpoena those three because I know if I get them on a stand, I'll tell the truth. Okay. It's a, it's a leader of a church, a leader of a... Uh, the Zen Buddhist Center and uh, okay. my last employer, basically. It wasn't technically an employer, but it, he mm -hmm. would. Well, <clears throat> I mean, if you'd like to set it for trial, I can tell them that you want to set it for trial. There's a chance that they might dismiss it if you do that. Also. Nah, that's what they did. In, in, I had a, it happened in Lancaster. I, I had a whole case against the cops because yeah. they were torturing. The cops were just following me around town, harassing me. And right. then they, I had a whole, I showed up in court. No, they dismissed it. Yeah, well, I mean, think about it. This, I subpoenaed everybody. Think about it this way. You know, from their perspective, one of two things is true, right? Mm. Either what you're saying is true, in which case they don't want it to be revealed, <laughs> or what you're saying is not true, which is why they tried to have you medicated before, right? So either way, it's not a case where necessarily they want to go forward with the trial and yeah. try to have you locked up or have you supervised or something like that yeah. because either there is a conspiracy of some type yeah. or you know or they well, I'm literally nuts or, I mean, right or their perspective is that there's a mental health issue well, and, and either way then like but really that's why, dealing with it through a criminal sentence is not the best way to deal with it right so <sighs> that's why I think they would be likely to dismiss it and I, I honestly just don't think you're going to get the satisfaction that you want but would I be so, able to call those if those, we could try. We could, if I could, I could call say, those witnesses, I, I can... I think the judge would say no. I think the government would argue against it. I think the judge would say he's no. He's going to say it's the ladybugs in the lobby and no sco the yeah, scope is... Yeah, you're allowed to testify about it, but whether it's true or not is not relevant. So whether what you did disturbed the peace I don't care. Or, you know, I'll, I'll go to jail for 30 days if I can get any of those three people on the witness right, stand. Right, so the rule, the, <laughs> like sort of number one rule of, um, of a trial is that we look at what the question is in the trial, and then the judge decides whether the witnesses or evidence that you want to present are relevant to that question. So even if we said that there was like a First Amendment issue or... Um, I mean, I want to show that I'm homeless because, I mean, there's a progression. They forced me out of my job. I, I completely they, understand and I can what show you want to tell the court. I completely understand it and I understand but my, you want But it to all comes that. down to those three people. If I can get them on the stand. See, what but, so the judge here also couldn't give you any relief, right? All the judge here could do is find you guilty or find you not guilty. This judge couldn't do anything oh, to I, the if, government. I, fine. If, if, if there is a court record of these three people on the stand uh -huh. under oath, yeah. they will admit this is happening. This will be the... This will come out right there on the witness stand. Right. But my question is, but if he can are, block I mean, me from calling these three people because they're not relevant yeah, to the ladybugs, yeah. then it's a waste of my time. That's right. They can do that. Well, then they will. And yeah. then then maybe I should just... Read. I mean, I think they should dismiss the case. That's what I think <coughs> they should do. Um, I don't, it doesn't really sound like you're in a position to pay any oh, I have fines no, I have no money or at all. even really do any community service or anything like that. So how long have you been homeless? Uh, off and on for the 10 years. Okay. I mean, I get a job, I work my way back up, and they yeah. kick me into the streets again. Did you ever serve in the military? No. Okay. I took the ASVAB and scored a 98, though. Not bad. <laughs> Thanks. All right, let me go talk to them and see okay. what they want to do with this. Thank you. And then I'll come back and give you some options. Thank you. Why should they pay? Why should they get Okay, so what they're willing to do 
Mm. So the officer told me that um, I guess you've been back to the building with Ladybug since then, and they just didn't let you into the building. No, they didn't. I, they said I could protest outside, so every okay. week I come and do it outside. Okay. I forgot to mention that part. Yeah. Oh, sorry. So, you know, this whole place is federal, right? Yeah. This courthouse, obviously, but the, the patio in front of here and, you know, 880 front is just like right over yeah. there, right? So this whole, everything that's connected by this sidewalk is all federal property. Yeah. So that courthouse... Well, I knew it was federal property. The, he, yeah. he, he told me the first day he said that you can do your protest outside. So every week I come back and I do yeah. it outside. So they don't want you to come back anymore, okay? And they're willing to dismiss it if you don't come back for a year to their building. If I stay off the building you property? Stay off of the, so don't go on that, don't go anywhere, any of this federal property. I'm banned from the federal building for a year. Yeah, that's, I mean, you would agree to that. If you don't agree yeah. to that, then... Then what happens? Then, I mean, we could set the case for trial. It's very, it's very hard because normally what we do, what a deferred prosecution normally is, is yeah. don't do anything like this again. But in your case, you want to do this again. So... <laughs> You know, so um, <coughs> we can set it for trial and see what happens. But, um, you know, they they could also, um, yeah, I mean, they, it's tricky with federal property because they can't really, it would be very hard for them to ban you from access to federal property. Yeah on your own if you have legitimate business there. Yeah. If you don't have business in that building, they don't let you in anyway, yeah. right? If you're not going to yeah. immigration or the IRS or the U.S. Attorney's Office, which are the three main offices that are in that building. Yeah. Um, but, uh, and like the courthouse is open to the public, right? So they can't, but they if they don't let folks in here if they don't have ID, for yeah. example, right? Um, so, you know, I think there's, there's kind of an issue of, um, yeah, they're asking you to agree to something that they wouldn't probably be able to do otherwise, except if they did give you some kind of probation, they could make that a condition of your probation that you not go there. Mm. Um, you, I mean, if, if you want to go there and not create a disturbance, <laughs> then, you know, I could talk to him about that. But I think the, the concern is that really the only reason you have to go there is to protest. Yeah. And the way in which you're protesting, um, I mean, because the point is that you want attention. I totally understand. But the way in which you're protesting. Well, the point is I want the war to stop. Because they have this screening at the front. They're saying it's, you know, it's it's impeding their ability to screen the people who want to come in who have business. But I'm nowhere near the doors. When well, this was. You the first one, yeah. Things on the x-ray, right? Well, the first one, yeah. yeah. Um, after that, I, I just did it on the grassy area. Or the grassy knoll, as I call it. Yeah. So if you're... If you're protesting out there in a way that doesn't affect anybody, but they're obviously know that I did ladybugs the consecutive well, I, day. I guess he said that you tried. They they think you tried to come into the building. Not after the, the first time. Officers won't let you come in. There no, anymore. I didn't even bother trying. Oh, okay. I, so I don't know if maybe they approached you and said don't come in. Or no, I like that. I never planned on going in after the first time. I did it for the YouTube video. I just it's me yelling at the building. Yeah. For I just I mean, yell it, at the outside of the building. So I know, so, you know, DEA is not even headquartered. No, I know where the DEA know. is headquartered. So, Believe me, that's that may be where I do my next protest if I'm banned from this building. But so, my yeah, question I think is, this agreement is, would be don't deferred prosecution. Don't go to 880 Front Street. Okay. For a year. For a year. I, I um, agree. You're screwed. But if you get cited for something like this at a different federal you're property, you, that would that would be the end of the deferred prosecution. This would come back and you would have a new citation for it. So if uh, you put ladybugs on the DEA's yeah. you know, conveyor belt, then you'll be you'll be back here but with two of these ladybug tickets instead of one. So this know? just comes back if that happens. That's what deferred prosecution means. Okay. Yeah, it means so the case is open for the year? For the year. And then it'll get dismissed at the end of the year as long as um, you don't. So we normally say no same or similar offenses, right? Which means no disorderly conduct offenses. Nothing, nothing kind of in the neighborhood of this, you know. Mm -hmm. And obey all laws, which means don't get, don't get any other citations. So I know that you're very passionate about. Well, I just want this to stop. I, I totally understand. I'm tired of being homeless because they're trying to turn me into a terrorist. I mean, that's literally the situation here. Yeah. I don't know um, how to make it stop. I mean, it sounds to me like if you if you tried to find another job now, 
I'm homeless and I push my stuff around in the cart and wear a dress because I have a medical condition that makes it impossible to wear pants. There's not many jobs left I have an opportunity of getting at this point. Yeah. Well, are you eligible for disability? Have you tried to go through that process? No. I haven't tried. It's, no. Yeah. So, I mean, I would, you know, we can we can give you some resources about, you know, possible shelter opportunities. I don't know if that works for you, but a lot of the shelters also have services available that will help you through some of these processes to get you the resources you need um, because it sounds like if you're physically unable to work or impeded in your ability to work that disability benefits would help you well it would help but that's a whole long process that it is a long process. i've been dealing with it is a long process. trying to I mean, they tried, when I climbed off the bridge, uh, after the two weeks uh, in the mental institution, they put me in a halfway house for two weeks, and they tried very much to get me to sign up for social security disability yeah. for mental disability, so they could mm -hmm. so they could legally say, see, he's crazy. I mean, I, I, I had the, the head of the Channel 10 News was going to pursue this story, uh -huh. and then he talked to Bonnie DeMontis' crew, and they told her, they told him, you know, he's crazy. You want to go with his word or ours? Uh -huh. And no one will pursue the story. I mean, I can't even... Well, here's the thing. You know, it's kind of a catch-22 where you want to protest and you want to do these things because you want people to know what's happening. But those things look crazy to a lot of people, you know? Yeah. Well, the... Right? Yeah. Right? Yeah. I mean, it's a dramatic protest, but also it's very easy for someone to say this is a crazy thing to do, right? And well, so it's actually making it harder for you to get what you want to do things. It's in the not way making it harder. There's no harder. I mean, I have, if you understood the, the, the scope of what I'm dealing with, uh -huh. there's no harder at this point. There is, I kind of hope they shot me because the moment that I die, the national security letters are broken. And every one of those people who knows about this case is free to talk to the press. And then my daughter maybe will get her son back. Mm -hmm. And my daughter's life might not be destroyed. Because they've ruined my entire family mm -hmm. over this for the last mm -hmm. 10 years. And the only way to get the national security letters, uh, uh, the clause where everyone has to be quiet, uh -huh. the only way to break that is when I stop breathing. And I don't want to get to that point, but I don't know what else to do. I, right. Senators, Congress people won't help, help me. Lawyers won't help me. The press won't help me. Uh -huh. This little ladybug protest doesn't help. What am I supposed to do? Yeah. I mean, I don't know what to do. So, I mean, I think that if you start by taking some steps to try to make it so that your personal daily life is not such a struggle, then you have, like, more of a foundation from which to do some of these other things, you know? Because you're right. It's like, as long as people, as long as you're presenting yourself in a way where it's easy for people to reject what you're saying... Um, then that makes it harder. And I know that these things are a process and they're not exciting, but, um, it, you know, I think trying to take advantage of some of the resources that are out there for folks who are struggling. Uh, it's not, it, it, you're talking about getting on a waiting list for housing that's full of bed bugs. I manage, I, oh, I sleep outside and don't have bed bugs. The idea of having a roof over my head, whenever I can't even go in, one of those people I said that I wanted to call was the, uh, she runs a church, the Wesley uh, United Methodist Church, uh -huh. and they have showers for homeless people. Right. Once I started going there, undercover cops would start going there and literally try. I have all this video footage of them trying to provoke me. I just want to sit by myself, take my shower, and leave. Mm -hmm. And the entire time that I'm there, I'm being harassed mm -hmm. constantly. Mm -hmm. And it's just like this insane... Uh, it, it, please, I know it sounds crazy, but when you get off work tonight, go to a patriotacted.blogspot.com oh. and look at some of these videos okay. and realize that I'm not making this up, that it's really that crazy, that they, the federal government really has a preacher in San Diego mm -hmm. who would go to jail if she admitted that she helped them torture me while I tried to just take a fucking shower there. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's literally that. So you're telling me go to homeless services. I go to homeless services and every undercover cop who's whose who's, uh, cover is that they're right. undercover as a homeless person, they just torture me. So those, I can't even those, go to those places. Those are things that you can file suit for, you know? I'm trying to... I have an hour and a half video of one police sergeant in uh, uh, Ocean, uh, Ocean Beach. Mm -hmm. One police sergeant mm -hmm. follows me around the city and gives me tickets. I have mm -hmm. six tickets right now mm -hmm. from him. Mm -hmm. 
I can't even get his supervisor to admit what he's doing is wrong. Mm -hmm. <coughs> Excuse me, waking me up. I'm at a park, hundreds of people. Comes, kicks me awake with his foot and just starts harassing me, trying to provoke me into violence. Mm -hmm. I have an hour and a half footage of one police officer doing that to me. Okay, well, Mr. Aronson, I think... I don't know, I mean, you... You, you, you kind of have to decide whether, sort of what you want to do here. I want to be left alone. Right. And they I, won't do I know. that. Unfortunately, so I can't I can't solve all of your problems. I, but and I'm, I've made some suggestions, but a lot of the things that you're dealing with are not sort of outside the scope yeah, of obviously. this legal situation. So I'm making suggestions. And I've, based I, on the I've taken too much of your time. I've had so. with other people. I'm not trying to kick you out. I'm just saying, you know, you're a grown man. You can make your own decisions. I, I've given you my advice, sort of as a person yeah. who works with a lot of people. No, I, I understand. This isn't a normal um, case. I can't I know, just go to the homeless and services. I know that you don't, you don't want to do those things. I can't make you do those things. Yeah. But that's my advice about how to solve some of those other problems. Yeah. Um, there are legal processes available if you believe that people really are acting outside the scope well, my of next... their legal authority, and that's I, I can't help you with that. Yeah. That's not what I'm here to help you with, but. You can do those things on your own too, you know. But it is important, even though you feel passionate, people are going to shut you down well, if you, you know. I mean, you saw what happened here. If if you're even if you feel passionately and that's righteous, if you're too loud or if you don't do things in the way that people are used to, it's easy for people to shut you down, yeah. right? So. Well, they didn't listen to me when I had a job and a car and a suit and tie for all that matter it doesn't matter not my story no one's going to believe the well, story if, what, if you what if what you want is a hearing then you have to go through certain processes to get that and this thing with the ladybugs is not going to achieve that unfortunately well, you know yeah. um even if we had a trial we probably wouldn't be able to air well, the, the grievance that you wanted to air if he wouldn't let me call the witnesses then there's no point in having yeah, the trial yeah probably not and, I, probably and not. considering those witnesses i know would tell the truth on the stand there's no way he's going to let me call them so um, so, would you like to agree to stay away from 880 Front Street, or? Sure. Okay. Am I, am I setting you up to fail here, or do you think you can actually do it? Well, I could stay away from 880 Front Street at this point. Okay. I can't promise all the other places in the world. That's all I'm going to put here, but we are putting no same, I understand no that. same or similar offenses, right? Well, that, right? I'll take so, my chances with that. Okay. So, if it comes down to that. So stay out of 880 Front Street. During the third. You don't have any actual business there, right? No. Okay. Do not attempt to enter. And so you want me to use this Cass Street address Please. for you? There's no box or anything? No. Okay. He ran out of boxes, so he just holds a mail for me. And what's your phone number? I don't have a phone anymore. Okay. I'm going to give you a date. You're not going to have to come back on that date as long as we don't have any problems. If you have a problem, you're going to get another notice to oh, come of back course. anyway. So. Well, I'll make, I make my decision on a day-to-day -day basis. So I'm going to have you sign there. I'm going to have um, a prosecutor sign, and then I'll get you a date, and I'll come back with your copy of this, okay? Okay. Um, I know that this was not satisfying. Um, well, I mean, like. But hopefully, you know, I could give you a little bit of information about. The I'll ways. take sure. Yeah, I'll I take mean, this. Up. I think if you believe the agents are actually harassing you and you have evidence of that. Copious evidence. Yeah. So those are things that you can actually that there are legal processes to file. You but know, the to problem. File complaints. Or the to problem file with that is how do I that. show? How do I show? Who, I mean, I can't name the agency that's doing this. From what I understand, talking to so many different lawyers, 
without being able to say this agent is at Homeland Security? So is how it, do you know that they're undercover officers without knowing what agency they work for? Well, I, I, have, I would have no idea of knowing what agency they work for. How do you know that they're undercover well, officers? My daughter's boyfriend announced he was a cop. Okay. And ordered I lay on the ground. And then nine police officers came around the corner in formation, pretended very gently to arrest him, right. and then took away my driver's license. Right. He was, even though supposedly had warrants, was released and then spent the next few months traveling uh, with uh, the Occupy movement up the East Coast. This guy who lived off of me and the money I made off the dispensary. Mm -hmm. I mean, they're, they're undercover cops. There's no question that they're undercover cops. Well, if, if but I can't prove who they work for. I mean, I'm assuming the DEA because so much of, of what had happened at that dispensary, mm -hmm. they, they, they were DEA. Mm -hmm. they were obviously DEAs. But I, I mean, right. there's no way DEA goes into my boss and goes, well, so, I mean, I, so, I mean, let me tell you, Mr. Aronson, for people to do things that would otherwise be legitimate as part of a, you know, an effort to, to sort of go after you, hmm. unfortunately, there's not a lot you can do about that. I know. So if you commit a crime, like an actual crime, and there's an agent there to see it, and that agent was following you around because they wanted to wait and see if you committed a crime, <laughs> there's not really anything you can do to, to complain about that agent if you do an actual crime, no. right? But, but if people are actually harassing you, and you know who they are, and you know who they work for... Then I don't yeah. know who they work for. That's so, the thing. Right. That's the hard part. So I mean, I know that's, who... what, that's what you really need. You need evidence. Well, that's why the, the, the police sergeants, because starting about a month and a half ago, uniform police, just all of a sudden, I mean, I've been homeless for a long time. Right. I've gotten six tickets in a in like a six week period right. because these cops just follow me around the city, and I document it. I pull out my camera, and goes, "There's Sergeant Yu just harassing me again." I mean, unfortunately, when it comes <coughs> to sort of the criminal homelessness piece of it, I don't agree with those laws. And the no, but they're, those they're, laws they're are enforced. But that that's where I'm saying that getting into homeless services is a way to avoid that. That's what I'm talking about. Except if, that if, it's if, not because I go into homeless services and I'm literally tortured there. I went to the Methodist church and the actual pastor slammed the door into me one morning because they thought this is the day he's going to snap because a bunch of stuff had happened the night before. Mm -hmm. They had her literally every day she said, do you want me to open the door? No, I'm okay. Yeah. This day she slammed the door and then like waited to see if I was going to snap. Yeah. She was cooperating. A preacher cooperating with Homeland Security and torturing an American citizen. Okay. How do you get that to stop? <laughs> Well, I mean, I, I have. If you go to the hashtag tortured by Methodists, mm -hmm. I've just documented all the bullshit just from them. Uh huh. I mean, it's we. It's. I know it sounds crazy, but what? Well, do we... so I mean, some of it is really about. I, I think it's important for you to to kind of characterize the things that happen to you according to how severe they actually are. Right? Yes. And, and well, the, so, my daughter being raped three times by the well, agents is, is at the top. That is very. Guess severe, who? But, so I've, I've reported it to the police. Yeah. I got. The, the Lancaster Sheriff's Department, uh -huh. they gave me a ticket number. Uh -huh. Cop never even called to investigate. I called back, right. talking to yeah, lieutenants, okay. please investigate this. I, I send them the video. I know, but Nothing. Mr. Aronson, <laughs> so how do I, mean, I do? a lot of this comes back to yeah, people funny. perceive you the way that you present yourself. But you they know? don't see me on the phone calling, asking well, why they, they won't. They can hear you, though, right? <laughs> I mean, that's, you know, and they, uh, if there really is a, big investigation then they already have information they already know you, i mean right? no one yeah so, so what do i do i mean the important thing is to try to like i know it's hard to stay calm about this stuff but to try to think you know be smart and think if people really are following you around and looking for excuses to give you a hard time don't give them excuses don't snap don't act like you're gonna snap don't you know don't even make I don't jokes think you or have any idea about, what's going on here i don't all right well, I, I, i'm gonna go get this okay. signed and i'll be back thank you i've done what i can Jesus, God. Thank you.